Hey, what's going on guys? Hope that one will be fine and welcome back to the part number four. So in this video, I'm going to explain you that how we can do the registration and we can save the data inside our MySQL, MySQL database, right? So the few things that I, again, uh, just want to revise that we have running our server for the backend, which we use Laravel with the help of the authentication. We created that a API and I already run that server, right? So make sure you have watched the part number one. So that can be really helpful for you to understand how we can get the response, how we can get the API and with the help of service from using Angular, we can extract that data, we can get the API and we can submit the form using post request, right? So that's what we are going to do in this video. So let's jump in and get started here, right? So I have my VS Code already open and um, before you should jump directly here, make sure your server should be running as well for the front end. And I also need to do, and I want to create here a service, right? So NGG for S for service. And uh, let's create the uh, folder with the name of service slash data, right? So this is gonna create the uh, data as a service inside our service folder, right? So now the service has been created successfully. So if I go to my source app and the service folder, and you see now we have created our data.service.ds. So it is a very important to create the service to get the API results. And so basically we can get the data and we can uh, pass it to the component with the help of service, right? So I created the data.service.ts and I need to import here the HTTP client first. So let's import that. So import HTTP client and that should be coming from the Angular. Uh, actually, I keep forget that. Add the right Angular slash common slash uh, HTTP. All right, so we define that. Next, I also need to define the environment variable. So that is basically where we have to show the API, uh, uh, the, the API URL, which in my case should be, uh, let me run that server again. So PHP artisan serve, and you see here, so this should be the uh, local host and the port number 8000. So that's what I need to pass first. So let's go inside your environments folder, inside your source app, and uh, sorry, it should be inside your yeah, source and app and inside we have our environment.ts file. So I need to pass here the URL first. So let's pass here. So API URL and let's define a HTTP colon double slash and uh, define the local host or point who and let's pass here the port number, right? Saves it. You can directly pass it inside the function if you want, but the better approach is that you can pass the service with the help of environment. You can easily get the um, with variable, pass the variable inside your request, right? So let's import the environment first. So environment, environment from, and this should be coming from you. Just move it out from here and let's go one more step and environment slash, and it should be environment, right? And uh, because we are working with the we are working with the HTTP client, so I need to define my HTTP client module inside my app.module.ts file as well. So let's go inside my app.module, and I need to import that. So let's go down underneath that. So import HTTP client module from the I need to define it inside the angular slash common slash HTTP right and we need to define that HTTP client module inside our imports array right that's fine let's go back to the service and there we go we have to define the function so uh, inside my constructor I need to pass my HTTP HTTP Colon HTTP client, all right, and let's create here a function with the name of register user. So we are first creating the API for the registration user, and uh, I need to define here the data which is coming from the API, and we have to return the response. So this dot HTTP dot, and we are having a post request to submit the form. Let's first pass the environment variable. So this should have the the, the local host port number 8000. 
in order to access the API URL, just simply put dot API URL and we have to concatenate that. So we have to pass here slash API slash register. Now this is our API, right? And let's pass the data and save it, all right? So now let's look for the notification. Uh, so I need to show up the pop of the message when we have to save the data. We need to show some uh, notification uh, like a toaster which I'm gonna show you just very soon. So let's go inside your register and uh, register.company.ts file and that's where we have to subscribe. And uh, we have to call this function with the help of this function, we will subscribe it and get the response from the API, right? So before I should go direct to the, uh, we have to define that function right inside our component, we have to look for first for the notification or the toaster. So let's go inside the documentation. So just simply type ngx dash toaster and you can simply reach at this uh, uh, to this website, to this page. And uh, so the few steps that you need to follow up. Um, so let's first copy that and install the NPM install. And let's go back to the editor, open up your terminal and just press enter. And this gonna install the ngx dash toaster for you. All right, so Angular animation package is required. Dependencies for the local for the default toaster. If you need to install, you can also install that. And uh, there are a few steps that you need to follow. First, just add this inside your Angular.json file. So if you're using Angular CLI, you can add it to your Angular.json file, right? So let's go inside your Angular.json file, and that should be. In, in your root directory and uh, just place it right inside your styles array, right? So let's look for the styles array and inside here, inside the styles.css or CSS, whatever you have choose. So just simply press and save that in st inside your styles array, right? So that's the second step that you need to follow and uh, you need to import some platforms you have to import some steps so add the toaster module to app ng module make sure you have your browser animation module so just simply copy that and just add inside your app.module.ts file and i'm going to go inside my app.module.ts file and uh, add it right after the http or right after the forms module right so this is for the browser and you need to import that inside your imports array so let's define that and simply press enter so this is for the browser animation module and i also need to import my toaster module so just copy that and paste it inside your app.module.ts file so i'm going to add it right after the browser animation module and add it inside your imports array right so that's it for it and now I need to import the toaster service inside my component.ts file. So just look at it and now it's installed properly, right? So now let's move inside your register.component.ts file here and I need to import my data service first. So let's go to right after the component and define the data service so import uh, data service from the uh, I need to import that data service. I'll just move it one step behind inside your service folder and let's go inside your data dart service, right? And I also need to import the toaster service, which is given in the documentation. So you need to define that as well. So let's just copy that. And right after the constructor, we have to define the private toaster, right? So just like we have to define the, the service that we just created, right? So I define my toaster service as well. So let's go after the form builder and define here the few steps. So first, uh, look for the data service. So with a smaller D and I need to define the service here. And next I have to define the toaster. So private, so let's give it the spelling of toaster, S-T-R. And uh, I need to define the toaster service here. So. So this should be for the toaster service, all right? And that's it, right? Okay, so let's go down to it and define here the uh, the the function for the, from the API from the service, right? And we have to get the response to it. So let's go here and define just just inside. Make sure you are inside your submits function, 
and this dot data service we define the service and now get the function name so register the service now we have to get the form value so this is this should be get from the this dot form dot value right not the value so this dot form dot value will do is that we have defined the form uh, we have defined the form group with the form object so we get it get its value so this dot form dot value and we have to subscribe it because we are getting the data and we have to get the response so let's get the response from it and with the help of response we have to save the data inside the data object which we which i have to define so let's define here the uh, data and with the type of any and we with the help of the this dot data we have to get define our response if i just want to console log and show the response saves it and let's go back to your angular application and go back to the register form actually it should be slash register and for some reason uh, it's not working all right so it's saying that the toaster service injection toast config so uncaught in promise so let's go back and see actually it should be dot for root so just like we defined routes inside our router module so i need to define inside as well inside my toaster module so just copy that and now if i go back and you see now it's working okay so now let's go to the register page and uh, let's add something uh, just to check validation is fine so test give it the test at the rate gmail.com let's add those passwords and if I just try to click register and you see now we are getting actually the response so the status one which means that yes the message the user registered successfully the code status which which is also showing that I'm, I want to get that inside our notification which I'm going to use for the ngx toaster right so you see here we have the code 200 we have message so I want to get the message I want to get that code and want to show on using the toaster notification right so if i just go to my database and let's look for the uh, database that we have uh, it should be full stack underscore auth now if i go back to the users so right now we have our four records so just delete them all for now and we are going to see that whether we are able to add our new data so with the help of the if the status is one that means that user is registered successfully all right so we also have to check that if that user is uh, already registered or not means that that we are checking the condition on based off the email right so let's apply that and see all right so we are getting the response which is a very, very first step which is fine and now i need to apply here a condition so if the this dot data dot status is if it should be equal to one then i need to show the response with the help of toaster so this dot toaster dot success which means the green color and so i need to get the response using json dot stringify and let's apply here this dot data and i need to access the message object so i use here this dot data dot message and same case for the uh, if I want to get the code, I can apply uh, get it with the help of this dot data dot code. Now we are able to get the code, which are this, which basically the status, which shows that. And uh, I next I need to define here the timeout as well. So timeout I need to give some time, which should be two seconds. And the progress bar should be uh, I need to give define that let's give it the progress bar value to be true all right saves it and that's fine okay so this is going to be the first step and let's move to the else condition so else and here i need to define if this dot toaster if something went wrong so this dot toaster dot error and i need to define json dot stringify and let's give it the get the message so this dot data dot message and i also need to give it just like a top i want to show the status code so otherwise it's going to show me that the email already exists so this dot data dot code and i need to define here the timeout 
it's uh, just like I, I just defined the so timeout should be two seconds and I need to define the progress bar should be true all right so saves it and let's give it a shot I believe everything will work fine right so if I just go and give it the test and let's define here the test at the rate gmail.com give the password so let's register that and you see uh, it's showing us the user registered successfully but we are unable to check a show I, I i think so i need to restart it in at some point so you see now we are actually able to add and save our database but we need to fix few things here first i need to uh, run my server again because i believe whenever i work with the toaster i again need to compile that so let's compile our server again and we have to see so we are able to see our response all right so this is gonna run our server and um, so i want to show you the api that we have created so already my server is running so make sure your server should be running right and that's the so that's how you can able to uh, save your data otherwise they, it will show you the 500 uh, response or net error so something on your console this is going to show you all right so let's add it at the uh, same email again and let's look for test at the rate gmail.com let's add the password and click on here and you see now we are getting the response of 409 which means that email already exists which is the status code for that right and let's add here something different sarah and sarah at the rate gmail.com and the passwords are fine click on the register and you see the user registered successfully and now we're able to uh, save an, uh, the unique emails right um, so if i go back to the database and you see now the email is uh, saved successfully but one thing you see that we are unable to we if i just keep clicking on this uh, this is going to show us the email already exists and i, I want this, these values to be cleared when when the data is registered successfully right so for that case i just need to see um, i need to make my submitted to be false all right so just right after that uh, i need to give it the uh, this dot submitted equal to false all right and uh, i need to get my form values to be clear so this dot form dot get i need to get reset the name so name dot reset and just just apply same thing for all right so so name email password and let's define here as confirm password all right saves it and let's go back and refresh this so if i just try to click on the registration so again the validation is working fine let's apply here john and john at the right gmail.com password should be one two three four five six and if i just click on the register button and now you see that the 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 all the fields are cleared up all the fields are reset right so i hope you guys learned something out of it so uh we are done with the validation we are done with saving the data we are done with the showing the messages using toaster right so in the next video we are going to look for the hopefully the last video i believe so where we are able to learn about the login how we can log in with that plus we are able to apply some kind of the uh some auth uh, authentication middleware where we can protect the routes we are unable to access the home page until the user is not logged in and uh, we have also look for the logout where we are able to log out the user by saving the token inside our local storage right so that's what we are going to cover in the next video so hopefully you guys love and like this video so please don't forget to like and subscribe and i want to see you in the last part